It is impossible for any human speech to express the full meaning of this delightful phrase, God is for me. This is a quote coming to you from Charles Spurgeon. Now, in this broadcast, we are continuing the theme of resolutions in our new series entitled, In the Beginning Was the Word. In this particular broadcast, we will deal with resolution number five, as found in Psalm 118, verse six, which says, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear what can man do unto me and we have entitled this resolution do you know what i know okay starting with psalm 118 verse 6 this is david speaking he said the lord is on my side i will not fear what can man do unto me the lord is on my side in the hebrew what he was saying there was, the Lord is for me. He is with me. He is my helper. He defends my cause. Once his justice was against me, but now he is my reconciled God engaged on my behalf. Now this expression can also be translated as the Lord is to me. The Lord is to me, which means Jehovah belongs to me. Jehovah it is mine. Oh, think about those words. Jehovah belongs to me. Jehovah is mine. So David was saying, the Lord is on my side. He is for me. And because of this, you need not fear. Like the Bible says, if God be for you, who could be against you? I like what John Calvin said. He said, it is enough for me that God is on my side. Oh, can you say that today? Is it enough for you to know that God's on your side? No matter what's happening all around you, what enemies are coming against you, it's enough for you to know just as long as God is on my side and I know I will be okay. Oh, hallelujah. The Lord has pledged himself to be with his church always. He has pledged himself to be with his individual children and that includes you. So what is there then to fear? The Lord is on my side. The Lord is for me. If you are on God's side, he will be on yours. If you will be for him and with him, he will be for you and with you. He was on the side of David. And we see that in the victories that David won, victory after victory, the wonderful things that he was able to do, his exaltation to the throne, and then the establishment of it. It was all because the Lord was on the side of David. And he is on the side of his people. He's on your side today to fight your battles, to support you under all your afflictions, to supply all your needs. Do you have needs today? Well, he's on your side to supply all your needs, to deliver you from all evil, to carry on the work of grace in your soul, and then to bring you to glory. The Lord is on my side. But David didn't stop there. He said, the Lord is on my side. I will not fear. I am resolved. I will not fear. I will not be afraid. Let man do his worst. I have nothing to be afraid of. God is more mighty than any or all of my foes. He can deliver me from them all. I will not be afraid. Here David, uh, he weighed the favor of God with the hostility of men or the hatred of men. He set one against the other. And he felt he had no reason to be afraid. The favor of God infinitely outweighed the hostility of man. David was 
calm and confident, though he was surrounded with enemies. He knew that man was a depending creature whose power is limited and who is subordinate to higher power. Therefore, he said, I will not fear man. What is man to God? Man is just flesh. What is man to God? I will not fear. And the reason why David resolved not to fear, we find the reason was the great fact that the Lord was on his side. He had that knowledge. He had that revelation. He understood the Lord was on his side. I will not fear. We see this, you know, in uh, worldly conflicts where people tried to secure the aid of a powerful ally. Like, for instance, in a lawsuit, they were trying to retain the services of a powerful advocate or in attempts at worldly advancement. They'll try to win the friendship or the interests of some prominent figure who could further their aims, the aims that they have in view. And they think this way. They say, well, oh, if only so-and-so could be on my side. I know that all things will go well for me. Oh, if I could only have that person on my side. I know everything will be all right. Well, let me ask you, who is so well off as he who is able to say, the Lord is on my side? Oh, how much more are you well off if you're able to say, the Lord is on my side? David said, I will not fear. Do you hear the courage and the boldness, the assurance, the confidence coming through his words? Well, let's look at that for a minute. You know, courage is a very complex and difficult subject. We see uh, physical courage. We uh, think of mental courage, moral courage, courage of convictions. But consider this. You know, this is really something... Many a man could walk up to a cannon's mouth, but could not face a public audience. Or consider this, many a man who has planted his country's flag in the thick of enemies or foes, but yet was betrayed, he betrayed his most cherished convictions. He was found courageous in one area, but weak in another. Where do you find true courage? Because that's not true courage. That's courage in one area, but not totally in the whole area. Where do you find true courage? Well, David d described it here in this text. He said, the Lord is on my side. That's the source of true courage. That's where it's found. The preacher's homiletic commentary said, True courage is the courage of trust in God. That's where you'll find true courage. You cannot rely on self-reliance. Self that will not keep you through. But trusting in God will. David went on to say, he said, The Lord is on my side. I will not fear. What can man do unto me? What he was saying there is, what can mankind do unto me? Man is powerless against God. Men are helpless to hurt you if God is with you. Now in closing, I want us to look at Psalm 56, 9, because I believe that David really uh, brings forth this idea of the Lord being on your side, the Lord being for you. Listen to what he said. And Psalm 56, verse 9, When I cry unto thee, then shall mine enemies turn back. This I know, for God is for me. Now remember, the Lord is on my side is the same as saying, the Lord is for me. David said, this I know, for God is for me. What he was saying is, he's for me, he's on my side, he's with me, he takes my part, he espouses my cause, he appears for me, he's my helper, my very present help, a help on my side, he's near 
at hand when I need him. He's among me, with me. He rises up for me against the enemies that rise up against me. He undertakes my deliverance or my enemies would have overpowered me a long time ago. This I know, God is for me. Do you know that today? Do you know that God is for you? He was for you before the worlds were made. He was for you when he gave his only begotten son. Yes, even when you were a rebel against him and with a high hand you were bidding his defiance. And he's for you today in your many struggles when you encounter hosts of dangers and you're assailed by temptations within and without. And let me ask you, how could you have remained unharmed to this hour if he had not been for you? How could you have made it so far? When you look back at all God's brought you through, how were you able to make it unharmed if God had not been for you? He is for you today with all the infinity of his being. He is for you today with all the omnipotence of his love. He is for you with all the infallibility of his wisdom. And because he is for you, the voice of prayer will always ensure his help. You can count on it that every time you cry unto him, he will answer. Your enemies will turn back. They have to because he is for you. He's on your side. God's on the side of his people. He's known to be on their side. When he appears, enemies flee. Oh, listen to what David said. For this I know. For this I know. This was not an, some uncertain hope. Not, this wasn't some fallible conjecture. This was a well-grounded assurance. It was a sure knowledge. David said, for this I know. For God is for me. I know it. I know that I know that I know that I know that God is for me. Adam Clark said, He who has God with him need not fear the face of any adversary. The Lord is on your side. He is for you. He is with you. You don't need to fear the face of any adversary today. You have God for you. Do you know that today? He is on your side. Do you know that today? Because he is for you, you can be assured that when you pray, your enemies have to flee. You don't have to be afraid of what the devil may throw your way. The Lord is on your side. God is for you. Like David said, I will not be afraid, for this I know, for God is for me. Our time is up for today's broadcast, but I'm asking you to stay tuned for our next teaching as we continue our study of resolutions as found in the book of Psalms. This is Connie Giordano with Walking in Truth Ministry, praying that you are edified, strengthened, quickened, and totally transformed by God's powerful life-giving word. In Jesus' name, amen.